I am Dr. Randhir Kumar, Senior Neurosurgeon and Minimal Invasive Spine Surgeon at Continental Hospital, Gachipoli. Today we are discussing about salient feature nuances of scoliosis and its treatment. As you all know, spine is a complex biomechanics in our body. It is one of the major framework for standing, day to activity and all other functions, major functions of our body. So this scoliosis term is taken from the Greek word called scolios, means bent or asymmetry. In general, as we talk, our spine is not straight. There is a physiological or normal curvature of our spine. As we can say, this is spine module and as this is straight. It's look like in AP, anterior posterior, it's look like straight. But when we see in the lateral, there is a gentle curve over the cervical spine, over the dorsal spine and lumbar spine. So as a natural, we call it as a cervical lordosis, dorsal kyphosis and lumbar lordosis. So this is a gentle anatomical curve is to maintain our body posture and to deliver our body weights from hip to knee joint and to the ground. So this, so what this scoliosis means bent, bent of in direction of the anterior posterior. If the spine is bent like this, either in dorsal region or in this lumbar region or in cervical region, either to left side or right side or either in single direction or in both direction. So any bent or asymmetry is called scoliosis and today we are discussing about why it causes scoliosis to develop early onset in the child in adolescent and the geriatric or in the AZ groups so first start with the 70 to 80 percent of this scoliosis in young population we call as idiopathic scoliosis idiopathic scoliosis means the cause or causative factor is not known and it is most prevalent between age of 15 years to 25 years of age. The other factors rest about 10 to 15 percent of cases where in pediatric age it may be due to your uh, neuromuscular disorders like cerebral palsy, many muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis or in other pediatric age group where is a congenital factor like a tethered cord, spinal cord cyst, duplication of the cord, myelom uh, syringomyelomalia or it may be due to the abnormal curvature of the spine by the hemivertebra. Third group is called degenerative group where spine curvature changes due to the aging of the spine either might be multiple disc level, fracture of the spine in cases of osteoporosis. These are the degenerative scoliosis and third group is congenital syndromic like Down syndrome and other. So as there is a multiple causes but still we know that 80% cause causative factor is uh, mainly idiopathic or not known. So now comes after how we will diagnose in the, our part uh, as a scoliosis. First thing is uh, observations. In the family or any member you can see how he is walking. Is there during walking from backside you can see the tilt of the spine to one side or either side. Is there crowding of the rib area or there is a hump over the your dorsal region or hump over the both of the scapular region. And third thing is how is the pelvic tilt or the pelvis is moved towards one side and the walking gait. These are the initial observations by the family member or any other primary physician. Then it's sent to the consultant or scoliosis surgeon or we called as a initials or a specialist treatment. So where we first examine the patients by the initials uh, whole uh, uh, spinal uh, symmetry is a bending in the bending posture see the overcrowding any hump formations and after initial observations the first investigation is just called x-ray x-ray film right from cervical to lumbar area ap and lateral is a very very important first informations uh, for the diagnosis of uh, scoliosis so we see 
in the x-ray how much bending is there which area is bending either cervical dorsal or lumbar is there any abnormal hemivertebra is there how the ribs are crowding and how the scapula are placed one to each other on by side third things after getting this x-ray we go for either CT scan or MRI. MRI will see the inner spinal cord structures, the nervous structures or any other anomalies in the spinal cord or over the root region which may causing this amount of the curvatures. Then after diagnosis of this scoliosis, we divide into the age group, pediatric age group, 15 to 20 adolescent age group and the zeziatric or after 60 plus or age, age group is there. So treatment of scoliosis is a combined program by the surgeon, spinal surgeon, the physiotherapist and other who are involved in the proper treatment and the follow up of the scoliosis. So as a first part treatment, uh, we observations is initial first treatment second is the bracing or the corset treatment and third is we called as spinal deformity corrections so treatment part is also divided according to the age group like in the pediatric age group the 15 to 25 age group and age group after 60 65 is a different modality so in pediatric age group we follow up with observations we see it we observe it after six month time after every time we get the x-ray we see how much the curvature is changing so in pediatric age group as a treatment, when we go for the surgery, we put a growth rod or we call it as a magnetic growth rod because child is growing and with every growth of the spine, the, this magnetic growth is changed in the size. So uh, there is a apparent no fusion of the spine. It's a spinal uh, deformity is corrected and the spine is also growed with the due duration of the time. In age group where the spinal maturity is achieved, so we go for the spinal fusion. So there are many modality of the spinal fusion right from minimal invasive surgery to open surgery. Ultimate aim is there to correct as minimal as curvature of what well, we call as a corpse angle, the correction of the corpse angle to the normal. And the third stage where asymmetry is due to the degenerative spine, we tackle according to the where its causative is there, which uh, spinal segment and what and how much correction is required at that level. So for overall, uh, this treatment policy is right from observations to corset or bracing to the spinal deformity correction and the physiotherapy. Third thing is important in this scoliosis surgery procedure, surgical procedure and safety which is a very very important because in dorsal and cervical area the spinal cord bending is much where we need a specialized operation theater with intraoperative neuromonitoring so that we can do our surgery with utmost safety and the uh, and after surgery we find we have to get a good correction with the preserved neurological functions so at continental hospital we have a well modulated spinal, uh, spinal surgery operation theater equipped with all modalities like a good microscope along with the nerve monitoring and good sp uh, intraoperative anesthetist. So we have, uh, we can achieve the best correction with the preserved neurological monitoring and the physiotherapy team in the follow up take care of our spinal surgery patients. Thank you.